I'm not really too sure on how to start this, but I just know I need help. My name's Jack, and my family recently moved into a new house in Ohio for my dad's new job. He got a promotion, or whatever, and it was supposedly a really high raise, so he took the job, which also meant we had to move. At first, everything was fine. The house seems a little old, a bit of a fixer-upper, but it has working electricity and water, so I don't really mind. It's a sturdy house too, mostly made out of brick, which is a nice plus compared to the usual cardboard and insulation American houses I'm used to. When we were moving our belongings inside, I realized the attic door was locked. I asked my mom if she had heard anything about it, and she was just as confused as I was. She said the realtor hadn't even mentioned anything about an attic, let alone a key to unlock it. I'll be honest, I was dying of curiosity to know what was inside that attic, but that's changed. I wish that whatever was in there stayed in there, that I never found out what was kept hiding behind that heavy metal door. I remember the first time it happened. It was a Friday night, and I had decided to stay up a little late to watch a movie marathon. I was eating a tub of ice cream while watching some old horror movies. When I heard it, it sounded like scratching above me. I paused the movie, listening closely to the sound. It seemed to pause and sync with my movie, so I waited a minute or so before unpausing the movie. About 10 minutes later, the scratching started up again, so I decided to keep the movie playing. While I stood up on my bed, and pressed my ear up against the ceiling to listen to it. I could faintly hear heavy breathing and what sounded like digging. Immediately, I pulled away, distancing myself from the ceiling in shock. After I calmed down for a bit, I tried to come up with a logical solution. Maybe there was a squirrel in our attic or a raccoon. That would make the most sense, right? Since it was starting to get colder, maybe they were searching for a warm place to rest. I decided that was the most logical reasoning, and that it was probably time for me to go to bed, as these horror movies seemed to have put me on edge. The next morning, I went up the thin staircase to the attic door. The staircase was dimly lit and covered in dust, like it hadn't been touched in a decade or so. I got up to the door and rattled the knob, trying to see if I could break it loose, but it didn't budge. Despite the dust covering the entire stairwell, the door didn't seem to have a speck of dirt on it. I found this odd but decided to leave it be, brushing it off as paranoia from last night. I asked my parents to put some mouse poison by the door, sliding it underneath since we couldn't open the door. I thought that would be the last of it. A few nights later, I woke up at around 1am to hear that same scratching noise coming from above my bed. I sighed and covered my ears to try and get back to sleep. I was honestly tired of these stupid rodents and just wanted to get some rest at this point. The next morning, I went up the stairs to the attic door again, this time with a crowbar and a hammer. The higher I got on the stairs though, the warmer the air got, until I was sweating. Beads of sweat dripped down my forehead as I reached my hand out to the door handle before yelping in pain and jumping back. I looked at my now burnt palm, then back at the door. I could barely make out the shape of flames from behind the door. I bolted down the stairs, yelling at my mom to get out of the house and grabbing my dog. We called 911 and waited outside the house for them to arrive. As soon as they arrived, a few of them went inside to put out the fire, while another got out their first aid kit, wrapping my palm in gauze and bandages. After a few moments, the firefighters walked out of our house, seemingly confused. Sir, where did you say the fire was again? It was in the attic. The door is what burned my hand. As soon as I realized there was a fire, I got my mom and dog outside and waited. Well, son, there is no attic. I looked at my mom in confusion, and we both stared at each other in utter disbelief. Excuse me, what do you mean there's no attic? She asked, looking up at them with an expression that said, what kind of sick prank is this? What I mean, ma'am, is that there's no attic in this house. There never has been, not since it was first built. But the stairs are right next to the kitchen, I protested, before they cut me off. Son, there was nothing next to the kitchen, but an empty wall. I'll have you know that false reports are a serious felony, the firefighter said, looking down at me sternly. But it wasn't a false report. There really was a fire. I saw it with my own eyes. I even have the burn to prove it, I said, looking at my mom to back me up. The firefighter sighed and handed my mom a small piece of paper. I would suggest you get your son checked. Ma'am, I'll let you off this time with a warning, but next time we will have to find you. I watched her in disbelief as she nodded slowly, and we watched them drive away. Phew, do believe me, right mom? She sighed softly, I don't know why they insist there isn't an attic, so of course I believe you. Let's just 
Stay away from the attic from now on, okay? I nodded slowly and we went back inside where she cooked us some warm dinner to settle our nerves. When she was finished cooking, she brought over two plates of soup before sitting down next to me on our couch, which was still surrounded by unopened moving boxes. After a few minutes of silence, I finally spoke up. Mom, I, I have to tell you something. She looked up at me, her expression concerned but caring. I keep hearing scratching above my room, and I think it's coming from the attic. I don't know what to do, I, she sighed, before looking at me again. Jack, you've been watching too many horror movies. I'm sure it's just your imagination. Let's just pretend the attic doesn't exist. Okay. I looked at her, searching her eyes for some sort of validation, but I got none. I nodded solemnly and went back up to my room, closing my door. We should have just moved out then, packed our bags, and found a new house, but we didn't. And that was our mistake. It's not just the scratching anymore. It's so much more. It's been a few months since we moved in it. I don't even know if we will make it through the year in this house. It's getting harder and harder to sleep every night. Whatever is up there, it's trying to get out and it's trying to get to me. Every night it's something. Whether it's growling, tapping on the windows, screeching, or even something inside my room, I never get a goddamn break. My grades have plummeted, bags forming beneath my eyes. It began haunting my dreams too, which you wouldn't think is that bad. I didn't think it was too bad either. I could deal with a few nightmares, right? No, whatever happens to me in those dreams, I don't know how it does it but it happens to me in real life. I'll wake up with the same wounds from my dreams, scratches along my legs and chest. The odd thing is, it always brings me back to the same place, the same old building, out in a field. I always try to find a way out but I can never find an exit. It's the same story every time. It chases me through the dusty, broken down hallways until daybreak. The building itself looks almost like an old school with a few desks left behind. The halls and rooms are littered with cobwebs and the wood is rotting and splintering apart with dust and mold floating through the air each time you disturb the area was resting. The dreams keep getting more and more vivid and it's starting to catch up to me more and more often and I've started to stop sleeping to avoid them. I don't know what to do. My parents refuse to move and I don't know why. When I try to press for answers, they just change the subject uncomfortably and won't respond. I'm sorry, I need to lock my door now. I'm starting to hear it outside again. I'll update you as soon as I can, but for now, if anyone has any suggestions on what to do, please, I'll take anything. Until then, it doesn't like that I'm telling people about it. I don't know what it is, but I know it doesn't like it. Every time I start to write about my experiences, I can hear it laughing at me. My battery dies after only a short period of time, and my computer glitches out constantly. I'm not giving up on telling you guys about this though. It wants me to give up, and that's just not like me. You guys are my only hope. Even if I don't make it out, maybe I can prevent someone else from getting in the same situation as I'm in. After my last post, I decided to try out some of the suggestions in the comments. I had a few people ask me if I could try taking a picture of the stairwell, so I went and did just that. As soon as I pulled up my camera on my phone though, something happened that I've never seen before. It was like, the stairwell was a blurred out mess. It was like someone had tried to censor it but did a really bad job at it. No matter how far away I got from it, it just stayed like that. It didn't stay in one place though, it was moving along with me. I tried taking pictures of it but I noticed my phone battery suddenly draining very quickly and when I went to charge it, the photos didn't even show up in my camera roll. It was like they had never existed. Another suggestion was that I try leaving a Bible on the staircase. My family has never really been the religious type, so I had to go out and buy a Bible. I think it was the uh, new international version. I never knew there were different versions of the Bible. The more you know, I guess. When I got home, I immediately walked over to the staircase and walked up to the door. I realized I didn't mention this earlier, but the staircase is pretty long and windy. I think I counted 42 steps. You can't see the door from the bottom since there's a curve in the stairwell. Soon I began hearing this sound. At first I couldn't make it out, but the closer I got to the door, the louder it got. I realized it sounded like laughter. It wasn't human laughter though I, I don't know how to describe it. It sounded so off, like it was doing a really bad job at trying to imitate a human's laughter. Oh, I've got it. Have you ever heard parrots talk? Sometimes they sound fine and other times there's just something off. It sounded kind of like that. 
Despite this freaking the living hell out of me, I kept walking up the stairs to the door. I paused, listening to the uncanny laughter for a few moments before knowing on the door. The laughter stopped, silence filling the empty space it left behind. I started to get this horrible feeling, like a paranoia, so I set the book down and booked it. As soon as I set it down, the laughter surrounded me from all sides. It was like it was behind me, a mile away, and in my head. Like it was everywhere, all at once. I got to the bottom of the stairs, panting, and realized the laughter had stopped. Thank God, I muttered, still gasping for air. I went back up to my room and decided to do some research. I know a few of you asked me to do research on the house, but I'm saving that for later. My first priority right now is survival, and that means figuring out how to deal with this thing. I tried looking up paranormal activity and went down a rabbit hole of this and that. Most of the sites either bring me to weird cultish groups or to church sites. I did give most of the church sites a look through, and some of them were helpful, while others told me the devil was inside my head and that the devil was making me mentally ill. Schizophrenia is the product of the devil. I ducked. I came across a few witch talks, and those oddly enough, seemed to be my best bet. After doing about an hour of research, I went out to go get my supplies. I didn't care if I seemed crazy or if they didn't work. I wasn't betting on the fact they would work, I just knew it was worth a shot. If they didn't work, then so be it. If they did, then that made my life a whole lot easier. Maybe I could finally get some sleep at night for hell's sake. My first stop was a crystal shop. I've never really been a believer in all this stuff, but hey, if it had a chance of helping I was willing to try it out. The cashier welcomed me, and I went about searching for the items I needed. Selenite, black salt, incense, and protection pendants. Now, after about 30 minutes in there, a lady came out from the back. She seemed to be maybe in her early 40s, with brown, curly hair, and adorned with crystal jewelry. Jessica, what's going on? She asked the cashier. What do you mean? Nothing happened really. We just have a customer. The lady interrupted, looking at me. Jessica, I need you to burn some incense ASAP cleanse out the store. Okay, Jessica said, going to the back to grab the supplies. Jack, right? I looked up at her in shock. How do you know my name? I said, bewildered. You're in need of some serious help, aren't you? She asked, looking me dead in the eyes with a serious expression. I, yes, actually, Jessica came out from the back, incense, in hand. As soon as the incense hit my skin, I began coughing. Da, what the, the hell? I managed to say between my coughing fits. It'll leave soon. Don't worry, it seems to be very attached to you. I looked at her in confusion, but after about a minute, my coughing recited. I was going to ask her what she meant by that but I didn't get a chance before she changed the subject. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Alyssa, I'm the owner of this place. As soon as you came in I could feel it following you. Thought it looked so much worse than I had imagined. I've never seen something so. Alyssa looked down, seemingly still trying to process what she saw, but it's gone now so we don't have to worry about it for now. I see you've already got some selenite in your basket. I think you're going to need a lot more than that. She said quietly, walking over to the shelves and grabbing more of the shiny white crystal. I'm sorry, I, it's okay. I can't afford all that I tried to say, but she cut me off. It's free. Excuse me. What? Aren't you trying to run a business here? I said, confused out of my mind now. What the hell was going on? Well, yes, I am trying to run a business, but I also would rather not see your name in the newspaper as a missing person and know I could have helped, or at least tried to. Cold shivers were sent down my spine. I did my best to ignore it, and after I collected the rest of my supplies, I went to the Catholic church to get some holy water. I stepped into the building and asked a nearby passerby where I would be able to find the fountain. They pointed me over to the stone carved fountain and I collected some of the water. After that, I went back home, feeling like this was all some sort of fever dream. I got inside and realized that my mom was out shopping. I had a few people ask me what happened to my dad. Well, his new job has got him really busy, so he's not home very often. I don't really talk to him much anyways, so I'm not too close with him. I took this chance to rummage through the cabinets that we had unpacked, searching for the papers to the house. After about 20 minutes of searching, I found them. They were in a blue folder, typical for my mother. She loved keeping things filed away. I opened the folder, and the first thing I saw were the blueprints to the house. Not really to my surprise, in the blueprints there was no attic just a wall. 
Just like the firefighters had said, I flipped through the pages, looking at the agreements. On the last page, I noticed the listing the house had been at. $34,000 us, old brick home, heat, and electricity. I stared at the number. Now, I may only be 15, but I know how much houses go for these days. A house this size should be at least 10x that price at $340,000. Maybe it was a mistype. I kept scanning the papers for any more clues, and I found my parents' signature. I read the paragraph above the signatures. I agree to all the terms and conditions, and have read all the requirements of owning this property. By signing here, I acknowledge that I will follow the conditions listed above. I understand that if I sign here, and do not comply with such conditions, I will be fined up to $50,000 USD per violation. I understand that if I violate more than five of these rules, the following consequences may be imposed. Incarceration, loss of property, job loss, loss of family members. I stared at the last one. What the hell do they mean by that? What kind of twisted they can't kill us, right? That's gotta be illegal, right? I looked below, hoping to God that I hadn't seen their signatures before and it was just my imagination. Despite how much I prayed that they weren't there, they were, and I couldn't do anything about it. I scanned the rest of the papers, looking for the requirements. After about a minute or so, I found them. They are as transcribed below. 1. No renovations are to be done to the house. This property is considered to be a historical site, and violation of this rule will result in a fine. 2. We request that you do not smoke while on property. Violation of this will result in a cleaning fee. 3. Trash is to be disposed of in the dumpster. Failure to do so will result in a cleaning fee. 4. Cats are not allowed on the premises. 5. If any furnishings in the building are to be harmed or broken in any way, do not contact anyone else but us. We will fix them. If you try to fix them yourself or hire another company to do so, consequences may be waiting. I stared at the fifth rule for what seemed to be an eternity. What do they mean by that? Why can't we fix it ourselves? What's going to happen if we do? Do they just not want to have competition? And why aren't cats allowed, but dogs are? Maybe they're just really big dog people. Who knows? I continued reading. 6. If you hear knocking from the attic, do not investigate. There is no attic. 7. Under no circumstances are you to try and open the attic door. 8. You are not to mention the existence of an attic to any outsiders. If any outsiders are to investigate and see the stairwell, the property is to be demolished ASAP with all affected inside. 9. By signing this contract, you agree to reside in this house for a year or longer. Failure to do so will result in termination. Termination? What do they mean? Did they just forget to write of contract after? Or was that what they meant when they said loss of family members? This situation seems to just be getting worse and worse by the day. Was this some sort of sick joke? Was this a city-wide thing they did to the new neighbors, trying to convince them they are crazy? Well, at least I know I'm not crazy and that the attic is mentioned in the documents, even if they're saying it doesn't exist. I heard my mom pulling back into the driveway, so I quickly filed the papers back where I found them, and went up to my room. I put the salt around my room, and lit some incense. At first it burned, but it got better after a while. That night I actually got some sleep, which I was eternally grateful for. The next morning, I decided to go check on that Bible I had put up there, and put some selenite on the steps. As soon as I got to the stairwell, something felt wrong. I walked up the stairs, and when I reached the door, I saw the Bible torn and burnt to a crisp above the now burnt book. On the door were words that seemed to be burned into the door itself, despite it being metal. Nice try. I stared at the words in horror for a few minutes, trying to process the scene before me. I decided to leave the Bible there and place the selenite on the steps and get the hell out of there. When I got down the stairs, my head was racing with thoughts. Is that why it was laughing? Was it laughing at me? Will the selenite work? How dangerous is this thing? How did it burn a metal door? After that, I went up to my room and sat there for a few hours, trying to process the situation I was in. The activity keeps getting worse, and I think it's because I'm telling you guys about it. Every time I start to write about my experiences, I can hear laughter from above me and scratching coming from my ceiling. I'll catch glimpses of things from the corner of my eye or hear something whisper my name. It's all got me very paranoid. The nightmares are getting worse and worse. They keep getting more and more vivid, though the pendants I bought and incense seem to help a little. 
every time I wake up from them. There's a burn mark on my neck, like someone was trying to rip the pendant necklace off of my neck in my sleep. I've started to draw out the building the nightmares take place in, to try and get a better grasp of it. It's definitely an old school, but it seems unfinished. What's really odd is it's not like any school I've seen. The desks are thinner and only have two legs, which are metal. The windows have these bars on them, and the window panes themselves are small rectangular pieces of glass that are about the size of my hand. Each window consists of about 10 of these small rectangles placed between the bars. The walls seem to have been painted a dark green before, but most of the paint has peeled off. I don't think it's due to age though, and it still seems like a pretty modern school, despite the shape it's in. It's like, the elements are affecting it much faster than they should. After drawing out the building to the best of my ability, I tried to look up any similar buildings. It took me about an hour of ignoring scratching at my door, tapping at my window, and cold breezes against my neck to find it. It was about 20 minutes out from town, in the middle of a prairie. I looked for more information, but there's no records of it being built or even existing before 10 years ago. It's almost like it just appeared out of nowhere. I've decided I'm going to go explore it tomorrow. I know it's probably a bad idea, but it's the only lead I have on trying to figure out what this thing is and why it keeps bringing me back to that place. I'm going to bring some flashlights, a candle, and lots of incense. Hopefully that'll help. If anyone has heard of this building before or has any information about it, please let me know. Until then, 